Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today let's talk about the history of your Mac keyboard. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you can read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. Now we all use the Mac keyboard all the time but have you ever thought about the individual keys? How did the command key get that weird symbol on it? Why is it a delete key and not a backspace key? Let's go through some of these keys. I have a lot of interesting stuff to tell you. First let's start with the command key. Now the command key of course is something we use all the time. It's the main modifier key for keyboard shortcuts. Command C, Command Q, and so forth. But the symbol on it is kind of weird. It looks like this. What's this symbol and how did it end up on the command key? Now originally if you go back to the first Apple computers they didn't have anything like the command key. But later on when we got to the Apple IIe they started adding these Apple keys. A solid Apple key and an outline Apple key. Now Apple didn't actually add extra keys to the Apple II computer. What they did is they mapped the joystick buttons. You can get an Apple joystick and it had two buttons on it. And these Apple keys actually mapped to the buttons on the joystick which made it easier to play some games if you just had a keyboard. But it also added a level functionality where the up or down state of these keys could be read by software and then could be used kind of as a modifier key. So when it came time to build the Macintosh there was going to be an Apple key on it and it was going to be used just like we use the command key now. But the story goes that once everything neared completion if you looked in the menus it gave you the keyboard shortcuts which would have an Apple symbol and say the letter C and then X and then V and there would just be Apple symbols all up and down all of the menus. And Steve Jobs didn't like that. There were just too many Apple symbols and it was the company's logo. He didn't want it to be used over and over again like that. So we asked the designers to come up with a new character. And they looked and found this symbol. This was the symbol that was used on some maps particularly in Scandinavia to denote an attraction or special location. Probably is supposed to look like a castle. Like a castle with four towers. Which of course throughout Europe would have been a lot of the attractions you would see on a map. It's officially called a loop square but there's a lot of different names for this symbol. Steve Jobs liked it and they used it and it became the symbol for the command key on the Mac. But have you ever heard that referred to as the Apple key? Somebody saying use Apple C or Apple Q? Well there's a reason for that. You see in the 80's Macs had an external keyboard and originally the Apple II had a keyboard that was part of the computer itself. But with the Apple II GS there was an external keyboard and Apple actually only produced one keyboard that could be used for Macs and also for the Apple II GS. But the problem was the Apple II GS needed an Apple key and the Macs needed a command key. So they simply put both symbols on the keyboard. And it stayed like that. It stayed like that all the way to 2007 for some Mac models. Here you see one of the earliest PowerBooks and it's got an Apple and a command symbol on the command key. So a lot of people started using Macs seeing both symbols. They didn't know what the other one was called so they simply referred to it as the Apple key. So next up we've got the Option key. The Option key also has a special symbol on it. This symbol is simply called the Option key character. Now what is it supposed to be? Well there's no official explanation but everybody pretty much agrees it looks like a switch. Either an electronic switch or perhaps train tracks. And you can see how if you would switch to another track it kind of follows the path of this symbol. So when you're typing on the keyboard if you want an optional character you hold down the Option key and it's like shifting your keyboard all the way to this other track where you get different characters when you press the keys. Of course sometimes people refer to the Option key as the Alt key. On Windows there's an Alt key and on Mac there's an Option key. But for years Apple actually put the abbreviation Alt in addition to the word Option on the key. So you can understand the confusion. The Alt key on Windows and the Option key on the Mac do similar things so it kind of makes sense and when you switch between Mac and Windows keyboards they're in the same spot. And next we have the Control key. And the Control key is pretty simple. But of course it does bring to light something interesting. Windows has a control key and the control key on Windows is like the command key on the Mac. However on the Mac you also have a control key. This is probably the number one thing that confuses people that switch from Windows to Mac. And the Mac originally didn't even have a control key. But when using Terminal 
to actually type commands, you still use control and the letter, not command. So the control key to this day is still used for most commands in the terminal. And you use the command key for most commands when you're using the user interface. But in fact, the command, option, control, and the shift key all act as the modifier keys and they could all be used for keyboard shortcuts. The caret is the symbol that's used mostly to represent the control key. No one's really sure why that is, but it kind of makes sense that it's an up arrow showing that you're shifting up to a higher level of control from the keyboard. But the up arrow character from early days of computing actually became the caret key later on. And it's something easier to type than finding a symbol. And then nowadays we use the up arrow mostly to represent shift. So now let's take a look at what could be considered the fifth modifier key, the FN key. And you'll find that mostly at the bottom left hand corner of Apple keyboards, a lot of older extended keyboards have it near the home and end buttons in the middle of the keyboard. And what this does is it changes the functionality of another set of keys, the F keys, which appear at the top of keyboards unless of course you've got a touch bar. The F keys are also called function keys or special feature keys. And they actually do two kinds of things. The F keys allow you to either trigger special functions and apps known as keys like F1, F2, F3 or they do special features of your Mac like the brightness of the screen or volume. Now which one it does depends on your settings in System Preferences, Keyboard, and then the Keyboard tab. And then you see a checkbox right here that has you toggle how they work. So you can either have these keys work as F keys by just pressing them or you have to hold the FN key down or you can switch that with the special features keys. If you use apps like Photoshop and such then you probably like to use these F keys for all sorts of shortcuts in there. But if you don't use complex apps like that that don't use the F keys then you probably rarely ever want to trigger F1, F2, or F3. You just want to use the special features on those keys. Now the FN key is what allows us to toggle back and forth. But the FN key actually has an interesting history because originally the computer wouldn't even recognize if the FN key was pressed. The keyboard itself would change and send different signals to the computer depending upon if the FN key was held down. But that's not true anymore for the Mac. As a matter of fact the FN key can be used for a bunch of different things. You can press it twice by default to start dictation. It's also used in the very latest Macs to actually trigger the emoji and special character viewer. In fact you even see the little globe there in the key that has to share that space with the FN now. Here's another key you may be wondering about. The escape key. The escape key originally was a way for early computers and terminals to stop the execution of something like sending a message over a terminal and you could hit the escape key to stop it. But it's really no longer used for that. However on the Mac you can use it for some interesting things like for instance instead of clicking the Cancel button when a dialog is up there like printing or saving you can use the Escape key to cancel it. One thing I find interesting about the Escape key but I don't have any information for is why it's abbreviated ESC all the time. It's ESC pretty much across almost all platforms. And here on the Mac you can see Escape is actually one less character than the word Command and the same number of characters as Delete. So why is it abbreviated at all? Why isn't it spelled out Escape? And now here's a key that generates a lot of controversy. The Caps Lock key. The Caps Lock key a lot of people think should be eliminated. There's really no use for it in modern computing. And I agree with them. Typing in all caps indicates that you're shouting. If you send somebody an email or text message using all caps or even just part of the message is in all caps you're saying I'm angry at you and I'm yelling at you. So it's kind of rude to ever use it. And if you want to capitalize a bunch of letters in a row it's just as easy to hold the Shift key down as you type. But on the other hand the Caps Lock key sometimes gets stuck down while you're typing and you don't realize it and you end up with a bunch of stuff you have to retype. Or even when you're typing in a password sometimes the Caps Lock key is stuck down and you're typing the wrong password because you're typing capital letters instead of lowercase. So I agree that the Caps Lock key should be eliminated and replaced with something else. And you actually can disable the Caps Lock key in System Preferences. So if you don't want to use it anymore you can disable it or set it to something else. Another interesting thing about the Caps Lock key is it works differently on the Mac than it does on other computers. In other computers, for instance Windows computers, if you activate Caps Lock and then you hold the Shift key down you're actually typing lowercase letters. On the Mac if Caps Lock is on it's uppercase letters even if you hold the Shift key down. Here's another one that's controversial because the Delete key on the Mac actually is the backspace key just about everywhere else. It's on the Mac that's called Delete. 
Backspace is very literal. It will actually delete the previous character. It will go back one space. Of course on typewriters it would actually have just gone back one space without deleting because you can't delete if you're actually typing on paper. But that would allow people to add things like accent marks above letters. The backspace key on computers will delete the previous character. So Apple just calls that delete. If you ever want to delete forward on a Mac all you need to do is use that FN key and press delete and it will delete forward instead of backwards. And here's a key that may be even more antiquated than caps lock except we've actually found a use for it in computing. It's the tab key. On a typewriter tab would actually jump to a predefined area to allow you to create columns so you can create columns of numbers. It's actually short for tabulation. On a computer you can tab inside of word processors. Actually there's pretty advanced tabbing functionality. But we also can insert tables and things like that. So you don't really use it that much anymore. But we now use tab a lot in order to move to the next thing. The next field in a web form. The next user interface element in a dialog box. And even the next cell in a spreadsheet. And that leaves us with one last key. One that's evolved over time. Originally at the top right corner of the keyboard there was an eject key. And that would allow you to eject media like for instance a CD-ROM or DVD that you had in your Mac. But it's also been used as a power key to allow you to turn your Mac on or off by holding it. But the most recent evolution of this key is now as a Touch ID key. And you'll find that on the latest MacBook Airs and you'll also find it on the new keyboard that Apple has for the iMac. So this works as a power key and also it has Touch ID to make it easier to enter passwords. So as you look at some history and some facts about the keys on your Mac keyboard. Hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching. If you like this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.